What's up guys and welcome to Idaho Fly Life. So today, I think, feel like this is a video that needed to be made. So a lot of guys, they start tying, they jump on YouTube, they look up patterns, and they really don't know what any of the techniques mean, right? So today, I'm gonna tie probably the easiest fly there is to tie, which is a zebra midge. Uh, now, zebra midge only requires four different materials, really. You've got a hook, and I'm gonna be using a Masu 16, it's a barbless scud hook, okay? You've got thread, I'm gonna be UT using UTC 70 in black. You have a bead, which is just a three 30 second silver bead, and you have small silver ultra wire, that's it. It's all you need. Best way to get started in tying, you're gonna learn thread control. Um, you're gonna learn a few different things, how to tie in, and it's only one material, but the tie-in process is going to apply to many, many different materials to tie in. I'll tell you right now, if you're an experienced tyer, you've tied, I don't know, 15 different patterns and you're excited and, and feel really good about those 15 patterns, and this is probably a video that you should skip. But if you're new to tying, this is, it's not going to be the wool booger, it's not going to be any of those kinds of flies. This is the first fly that I'm going to tell you to tie. I'm tying it in 16, not because it's the most effective size for this fly. I actually usually fish them in like a 20 or a 22. But on a 16, you will get to see the thread control on a much bigger platform. It's going to be a lot easier for you to tie on that size of hook. So we're going to get into it here, but like I said, I'm going to put links for everything that I use. And that's the materials, the tools, everything. So I hope you watched my tools video. This is gonna require the most basic tools that you can have. So just a fly tying vise, a bobbin, a set of scissors, and we're gonna add a little bit with a whip finishing tool. But that's it. Let's get into it here. Like I said, it's gonna be a long video. I'm going to explain every step of this process to you and show you as well as I can how to get the correct thread control. And I'm gonna be zooming in and out of this fly an awful lot. So if that bothers you, I'm sorry, but I just want to show you everything. This is going to translate into all the flies you tie in the future. So let's get to it, guys. Okay, guys. So the first step in this process is to thread the bead on the hook. Sounds simple, right? But there is really a technique to this. Um, not so much a technique, but just a proper way to do it. So on a bead, and you don't have to have these hackle pliers that I've got here for this tie, but I wanna show you, and we'll see as big as we can, there's a small hole and a large hole on these beads, okay? Small hole on this side, large hole on this side. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the hook and thread it, and again, you can do this in your fingers. You don't need these hackle pliers, all right? but we're gonna thread this hook right through the small side of the bead. Point first, and then move it up to the top of the fly, okay? There she is. So you can see there, bead goes all the way to the eye of the hook, all right? Next step is to clamp that hook in your vise. Now, don't do what my wife did the other day and try and clamp it eye side, eye side here in the vise. It's not gonna work. You wanna clamp this guy just by that bottom bend of the hook so that the hook point is slightly protruding. All right, I'm gonna zoom in on that so you can see. Right there, okay? Now this is in a Renzetti vise. It's got a cam lock system, which a lot of your standard vices are gonna have. But I'm also gonna show this to you on a Regal vise because some of you guys only have the Regal, don't have the Renzetti. So let me set this up a little different. So we've got the Regal vise set up. Um, so Regal is a little bit simpler. I'm gonna zoom out here and show you. The Regal has a lever on the back side. If you depress the lever, opens the jaws, right? Depress the lever, opens the jaws. There's no need to lock anything down with a Regal. 
So we'll go ahead and sit it in here. Let's try to focus on something else in the background. So let's try this again. Okay, so I'm gonna depress the lever. I'm gonna set it same position in that vise where the hook is just barely pointed out. Let's just zoom in so it will actually focus on what I want to focus on. Okay. There you go on the regal. We'll do that one more time. You just depress the lever, open the jaws, insert the back bend of that hook in with the bead and the hook eye facing forward. All right. So that's it on the regal. Uh, this is the last time I'll use the regal. I tie most of my really small stuff on the Renzetti. I prefer the regal for larger flies, streamers, that kind of thing. Uh, not to say a regal isn't a great vice. It is. This thing holds this hook solid. You can see I can move that hook around. It's not going to shift on me. But I just like the Renzetti a little bit more. I'm going to go back to the Renzetti. Okay, and a side note. <clears throat> I actually said that I was going to go back to the Renzetti, but we're not going to do this with a vice at all. Because I want to focus completely on what we're doing. So, next thing you're going to want to do after that hook is secured in your vise, or before, doesn't really matter, is you want to put your thread, I'm just zoom out a little bit, put your thread on your bobbin. This is a right bobbin, so we're going to thread the right bobbin. Any bobbin will work relatively the same way. If you have a, a clip bobbin, um, like one of the older style bobbins, all you'll do is thread it and then put the, the spool between the two clips. And actually, you know what, I'm going to show you here. All right. So a lot of you guys are not going to have that right bobbin. You're going to be using one of these. May or may not have this thumb hold here, and that's fine. So what we'll do is you'll take your thread, you'll pull the end out here, okay? And will take that end, and I'm going to wet it because it makes it a little bit easier to work with. Take that end, and it goes through the bobbin of the bottom, bottom of the bobbin tube here. All right, so when you get a little bit pushed in and you'll grab it, you'll actually suck on the other end of that tube to pull that thread up and through like so, okay? That's what you want it to look like. Here's the thread, here's that side of the thread. And then what you'll do on your bobbin is you'll actually take the spool and you'll work it into the cradle there, okay? So that's what you'll need to do if this is the kind of bobbin you're tying with. I'm gonna do the same thing, but on my right bobbin. Um, so a side note, when I say to control the tension on one of these bobbins, I'm gonna move this other vise out of the way here. All you do to control the tension, right, is as you're pulling that thread out, you'll have a little bit of tension. If you want more tension, you can squeeze here on the two arms, right? If you squeeze it together like that, you'll get more tension less tension if you let it come open okay so pretty simple there i i tie on the right bobbin because it's a little bit easier as far as tensioning i can get my initial tension down the way i want it and then use my thumb to tension the, the thread down a little bit tighter but all right let me get this set up all right guys so i've got that hook oriented in the in the vise and what you'll see is it's oriented with the eye facing just a little bit down it's pretty easy to do that with a scud hook, but that's so the bead lays forward against that uh, the hook, or excuse me, against the eye of the hook here. Next step's gonna be starting the thread, and I'm gonna do this really slowly, because you'll do this on every fly. What you'll do is come in, make one wrap, and then you'll overlap back over what we call the tag end, which would be this end, okay? The end not attached to your bobbin. You're gonna wrap back over that tag end several times. And what you'll notice is after about four or five wraps, if you pull on that tag end, it doesn't move anymore. Your, your tag end has been locked down, your threads have been locked down at that point. Now, after you've made those wraps, what you'll do is come in here with your scissors and you're going to do what's called trimming the tag end out. So you'll just come in with the scissors at an angle, and you'll snip that tag end. Now, at this point, that thread, you can pull on that thread pretty tightly. You see that whole fly moving with the tension I'm putting on it? That thread's not coming loose. So on the zebra midge, this is a cone-shaped fly, right? So what I'm going to do is wrap back up, 
over the reps that I just made, and I'm going to make a cone shape to this fly. All right, you'll see the little fuzzies there, and that's fine because we're gonna wrap over them. You don't really need to trim those out. But how you achieve that cone is by building up right behind the bead and then taking a few reps rearward, coming forward again toward the bead, okay? Now the tension on these wraps, you can see as I'm moving around this zebra midge, that that uh, hook is moving a little bit in the vise. The reason being, I'm putting quite a bit of tension with my thumb on this thread. Now for you, it'll probably be squeezing that bobbin to get the correct tension. For me, I'm, I'm putting some extra tension with my thumb. Uh, why you would do that is to tighten that thread down so that it, it it's locked in, it's not gonna move at all. Okay, so you'll see with the last few reps here, now my thread is getting what's called corded. Okay, something that'll happen with the UTC thread is actually very important that it does. But to remove this cording, and I'm gonna zoom out to show you, you'll put a counterclockwise this direction, okay? Let's get a little bit farther. I can't get any farther out than that. Okay, so you're gonna spin your bobbin counterclockwise. Now what's going to happen, and I'll zoom back in so you can actually see it here. What's going to happen as I uncord this thread is gonna do exactly what I'm saying. It'll uncord that thread so it'll lay flat. See how it uncords it and flattens it out? And it'll be much, much more obvious if I use a bobbin to show you. The thread starts to get flat again. It's not corded up, it starts to get flat. That's exactly what you want for a zebra midge is for that thread to be flat right up until we tie in our wire, okay? So with the thread flattened out, we're proceeding to make that nice tapered body. And you can see how flat it is now with the, with the individual strands of thread pulling apart. It's actually a good sign. So once you have the cone shape that you want, which for me is about there, and we'll do one more pass down and then one more pass up, I'll come back to the front of the fly making touching wraps with that thread, right? Just like that. Now we're gonna tie in our wire. Now tying in wire isn't the hardest procedure in the world, but most of your materials, if you're gonna tie something in tight, this is what you'll do. And I'll explain why here. So go ahead and, and either cut or break off just a couple inches of wire here, couple inches of wire. And this couple inches of wire is gonna make multiple zebra images. You'll take the end of that wire You'll come here, here, this will be the easiest way to show you. You'll catch this at like a 45 degree angle. So I'm gonna turn the fly so that it's, this is the top of the fly here. And you want basically a 45 degree angle when you catch this wire. Now the reason for that is you want that wire, when you pull it down to size, to come up and be right on top of the hook. Now you see it's basically in line with the hook. When you flip this back down and you wrap, that puts the wire, and I'm just wrapping over the end of the wire right now, but it puts the wire right on top of the hook. And that's what you want. Now what I'm doing with my left hand here is I'm pulling back on this wire gently so the wire stays straight and flat and on the back of that hook, right? And just so you can see, I'm not really pulling straight back like this. I, hmm, it's not picking it up very well. I'm not pulling straight back. I'm actually holding it at a slight angle. Uh, just so there's something called thread tension or thread torque, excuse me. When you wrap over, the thread tries to push the material to the far side of the hook. So to counteract that, I'm just holding at a slight angle towards me as I'm wrapping back over that wire. So we're going to wrap all the way down pretty deep into this bend. You notice how my thread's cording up again? I'm go ahead and give that another counterclockwise spin because you want this body to be smooth. And how you make a smooth body on these flies is to have flat thread. So it's flattened out again to come down very, very deep into that bend. I mean, you we're almost, I would say, what, one third down the bend of that. And then we'll come back up with that flat thread. And as I come over the top, you'll see it kind of smooths out any imperfections here. And that's what you really want to do is smooth out this fly. Now, I've got a little bump right here. So what I can do is give a few thread wraps to keep smoothing out this body. Okay, so when you get to the front of this fly, nice and slow, is 
you'll come back. First off, you'll again spin counterclockwise, flatten that thread out. You come back and you'll build, basically you'll build the abdomen on this fly up to the back of the bead, just like that. Okay, at this point, we're gonna do what's called a palmered wire wrap. Now, you'll hear a palmered, palmered wrap in many, many different flies. All that means is you're gonna open spiral wrap this wire or a hackle or whatever. And on an open spiral wrap, you're just gonna leave some space in between the wraps of wire, like that, all right? You want this to be as even as possible, but I don't think the fish are gonna count your segments before they take your fly, and I don't think they're gonna measure your spacing too terribly much. So we wrap this wire all the way forward, just like I did there. Nice open spiral wraps right up to behind the bead. Now we're gonna tie this wire off. So for materials, you're going to tie a lot of materials off as well. That's part of fly tying. I like to tie a material off when it's on the underside, like this. And all you'll do, you see how your thread is on the front of that material right now? You'll move the bobbin behind that material. You'll give one, two wraps, and then one more time, you'll move it, the thread in front, the material toward the bead side, and you'll give another wrap. So at this point, that material, let's see here, you can see it is actually tied in place. So with wire, especially of this size, all I do to kind of fix that or to put, cut that out is I don't actually use scissors. I'll take it, I'll hold on to the fly, hoping this translates, and I'll helicopter the wire off. Just means move it back and forth until it breaks. Now you'll see on the underside of this that that wire broke clean. You can do this for wire basically down to brassy size. Um, anything above brassy when you start getting into the medium wires and that, you'll no longer be able to use that helicopter method. Now, we're gonna finish this fly now, but I don't like the proportions right at the top of the fly. So I'm gonna bulk up right around the bead just to give a little bit of a head. And you can cover up a little bit of that wire to give this impression of this head, right? But we're gonna give put this head on this fly, which is that bump that you're seeing there in the camera. And then I'm gonna come in with my whip finisher. Now I'm gonna zoom out for this so you can see the whole whip finishing technique. Okay, so you'll take your whip finishing tool. There's a hook on the front and there's a notch here. You'll hook and then loop over the notch like that, okay? You're making a figure four. You're gonna turn the whole tool so that you have a figure four on top of the hook, just like that, okay? Then you'll go one, two, three wraps, and I'm actually wrapping right on the back side of the bead. All right, up, and pull straight down, and then tighten up your thread. Now, so if you tighten it up too much, your thread will snap. So just tighten it up until it stops, and that is a finished zebra midge. Very, very simple fly to tie. You see, very simple. There's your finished zebra midge. Now I'm gonna do, this is not a step that you should do on your own, but just to show you a close up of how a whip finish looks, I'm gonna put one more whip finish up a little bit higher up here on the bead, okay? And it's not gonna make the fly look that much different, but I've got my figure four right there. Let's see if that'll come through, yep. I go one, two, three, okay? Straight up keeping that hooked. So you'll unhook where it's sitting behind this set of the whip finisher, pull straight back on your thread, and then pull that front of the whip finisher out. Okay. And I've got a little bit of a mess now. That's fine. This is one of those things that I'm showing you for practice, so I'm not too terribly concerned about it. But you pull straight down on your thread, and you'll cut your thread out. And that is a finished zebra midge. Now this fly is actually a really effective fly, especially in those smaller sizes, the 20s, the 22s. The only drawback on this fly is that if, you, if you're fishing in that size, you're gonna have to use like five and six X tippet and 
yeah, that'll snap pretty easily on a larger trout if you don't know how to play the fish. But I'm assuming that you guys already know that. I'm assuming that most of you guys are fishermen first and then tire second. So this is kind of that quintessential starting fly. Um, real quick, so that, that's the end. That's all you need to do. You can add head cement here if you'd like to. In fact, I'll do that just for good measure with some Sally Henson hard as nails. If you're worried about the thread coming undone, which you really shouldn't be worried on this one because it's overwrapped with um, wire. But Sally Hansen hard as nails, give it just a little tap right at the head. And that was a lot more than a little tap. That's okay. I'll just remove some. My pod can hear. You'll tap your Sally Henson hard as nails on top. It'll soak into the thread wraps. Yep, you know, this is gonna end up being a coated fly. It'll soak into your thread wraps. And it'll dry there. Now, again, that looks a little funny. Looks more like a Pertagon than a Zebra Mage, but that's okay. I don't hardly ever head cement Zebra Midus. If I'm gonna do anything, I will UV cure them to make them a little bit shinier. Again, guys, that's it. Very, very simple fly. Tie a bunch of these. I mean, sit down and tie five or ten before you go on to another pattern. Make sure you feel comfortable tying in that wire. Make sure you feel comfortable with the whip finish. And another kind of pro tip, you can whip finish like 50 times on one hook just to get the technique down. I would highly recommend doing so. That's the Zebra Midge. And I think we're done with this video. Hope you learned a lot. Please like and subscribe if you liked it.